Representative Nancy Mace. That's number one. We also now have another person. Representative Anna Paulina Luna. And another representative. So many representatives. Grilling. Kimberly Cheadle. The director of the Secret Service. Now, the thing is, I think it's better that we start off with something big. Something huge. And that is, number one, Representative Nancy Mace, where she pretty much tells the Secret Service director that she's full of shite. If you don't have to believe me, I mean, I'm surprised. Congresswoman, language, please. Okay, my first question. Both sides of the aisle today have asked for your resignation. Would you like to use my five minutes to draft your resignation letter? Yes or no? No, thank you. <clears throat> Was this a colossal failure? It was a failure. Yes or no? Was it a colossal failure is the question. Yes or no? I have admitted this is a terrible This is a failure. yes or no series of questions. Was this a colossal failure? Yes or no? Yes. Have you provided a list to the Oversight Committee? Yes I, or no? I'll have to get back to you on that. <laughs> that is a no. Have you provided all audio and video recordings in your possession to this committee as we asked on July 15th? Yes or no? I would have to get back to you. That is a no. You're full of shit today. You're Language. Representative Nancy Mace. Great representative of South Carolina, 1st District Republican. What'd you say again? Video recordings in your possession to this committee, as we asked on July 15th. Yes or no? I would have to get back to you. That is a no. You're full of shit today. You're just <laughs> being completely dishonest. <laughs> 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 Now, that's pure gold. That is pure gold. Now, now, in an earlier segment, I played a video of AOC grilling uh, the Secret Service director. Now, why was that important? Because the thing is, those were simple, basic questions that AOC was asking the director, Director Cheadle, Kimberly Cheadle, to be more precise. And she couldn't even give a coherent, reasonable, respectable answer. And even when confronted and told to resign, it says so much about the operations and who is really running things. Because then again, when we look at all the agencies in Washington, D.C., all the institutions and the directors and managers on board who are running things, who are appointed by our politicians, a conclusion must arise. And that is no one knows how to do their job anymore. Now, the fact is also this. I want to pull up this one here from Anna, represent Anna Paulina Lula, where she basically tells the director she perjured herself. Case in point, this video here. Director Sheetal, can you please give me the names of the individuals who are in charge of your con-op for the rally? I'm not going to release names. Can you give me today. the titles? And how no. many individuals? No. Nothing? We, we had a full advance team that was responsible who for the, advancing How many the people site? are the final approval authority? There are a number of people Can you that me are engaged in approving the plan. Can you give plan. me a number? No, I do not have okay. a firm number. Can you just confirm whether or not, I understand this is an open investigation, but, but in, or, in order to dispel conspiracy theories, have you guys been able to subpoena the shooter's discord records or has the FBI, to your knowledge? I believe that the FBI is working on those. Okay. Now, before we do continue on, I do want to pull this up here as well because this is breaking 11 minutes in, Secret Service Director Kimberly Cheadle resigns over Trump shooting outrage. Resigning. This just broke right now as it stands. U.S. Secret Service Director Kimberly Cheadle resigned Tuesday following widespread outrage over how her agency failed to prevent the attempted assassination of former President Donald Trump at a Pennsylvania campaign rally earlier this month. Cheadle's resignation at first reported by NBC News citing sources came a day after she was blasted. Hey, phrasing, phrasing, Lana, phrasing by members of the House committee at a hearing on the Secret Service actions leading up to Trump's July 13th rally in the Butler Township of the great state of Pennsylvania. Continuing on. Is it factual to say that you have not ruled out that the shooter was working with other people or persons? Again, the FBI is conducting the criminal investigation. Into can the you, shooter. at least in an effort to dispel conspiracy theories, can you confirm or deny that? At this time, we do not have that there were any other people engaged. So you believe he's acting alone? I do. Okay. Have you been made aware of multiple eyewitness reporting that there was a, a second shooter on a water tower? 
I do not have any information related to any second shooter. Okay. Uh, the reason I asked that is because according to testimony from multiple witnesses, they did report that. And again, I, to my understanding, there were over 40 sniper teams that were briefed by the Butler ESU. And I want to make sure that people are aware, if you're saying that there's not another shooter, that we are able to clear that information because from this whole entire briefing, it doesn't seem like much information has been able to get out to the American people. So I'm trying to dispel rumors, as I'm sure you understand. Um, was it true that Secret Service was present at the Butler ESU briefing? There was a briefing between the uh, counter sniper teams. Was uh, that were By the way, P. Wayne Smith, there's no way I would hire a direct Cheadle or Chettle, Cheadle, however you say it, Cheeto, um, to be a bag or a target, okay? Hell, I wouldn't trust her to put food, to, to, be, to, be, a, uh, to be a stocker at Costco, okay? All right, that's that's some high end stuff. That's that's a job that she can't do, or working Secret on Service the ground. Present. Yes, to my knowledge. Okay, I want to read you a report from people that seem to be throwing you under the bus and stated that they were in attendance and that Secret Service was not in attendance at the security briefing, according to individuals with knowledge. To also include that the AGR building where the shooter Thomas Matthew Crooks was located. Um, was actually not a part of their security perimeter for that. So there was not Secret Service present. <clears throat> um, it seems as though that when you were asked earlier from Rep. Kristen Morthy about whether or not Secret Service was aware of a threat, you had said no, they were unaware of a threat. And yet, according to communications, again, from law, law enforcement that were in some of these group chats, they actually had reported that Secret Service was made aware of a threat at around 5.59 p.m. as a part of the command, including Secret Service, aware of messages and requests about in, uh, information about the suspect's location. Can you please tell me if you have knowledge of that at all? Again, I think we're conflating the, the difference between the term threat and suspicious but you guys did have knowledge at 5 59 p.m according to those group chats did you not now i want to be very clear here during that hearing before she made this announcement again this is breaking right now that this took place that the again head of the secret service resigned earlier yesterday she was saying she was not planning to resign the hearing gets far more brutal because here we do see, see her where she basically perjures herself. Let's continue on with the video. Of a suspicious individual. Okay. Um, Chairman, in my opinion, according to some of the testimony today, I feel that you have perjured yourself in some instances. And so I'm going to ask for a full review of the transcripts by staff. And if you find that to be the case, I do ask that you bring perjury charges against the director. Um, I will say this. It is very frustrating. And I've talked to my colleagues, and we've said it to your face, that you have been up here basically stonewalling our ability to get the answers to the American people. And what I will also say is that every single member of Congress does not feel safe with you in charge. You have heard that. And I think that we are all sitting ducks with you and directing the Secret Service currently. Uh, but more importantly, it sends a message to our adversaries that we are not protected. And we are one of the strongest countries in the world. So you have essentially made us a less safe country because of it. Um, as a result of that, I'm asking you to formally step down. I share my same opinions as my Democrat colleagues. And I also think that your efforts to bring forward a full um, investigation and report in 60 days is unacceptable. And as a result of that, I'm going to do everything in my legislative toolkit to ensure that that happens sooner rather than later. And I'm sure that you know that we brought a vote on inherent contempt against Garland for okay. essentially blocking a congressional investigation. And I don't think that you should be any different. So um, I will say that I am just completely disgusted by your performance today. And I understand that you are probably in a position where you're being told not to testify, which is why we had to subpoena you. I think that goes back to Garland. But again, that is part of the uh, flushing that we need to get out of Washington, and I would be happy to assist in that process. Chairman, I yield the rest of my time. Now, hold on here. We got one more, and that is from Hotspot. Just for the record, the Secret Service has an annual budget of around $3.1 billion, and I believe around 8,000 employees. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Obviously, there were many security failures on the day of the attempted assassination and leading up to that day. Let's start with the building that the shooter used to shoot President Trump from. At any point Saturday, 
did the Secret Service have an agent on top of that roof? Sir, I'm sure as you can imagine that we are just nine days out from this uh, incident and there's still an ongoing investigation. And so I want to make sure that any information that we are providing so, to you so, is so factual. You, you can't, okay. Why did the Secret Service not, can you answer why the Secret Service didn't place a single agent on the roof? They were inside the building. They were inside the building. After going through this, she actually had the audacity yesterday to say that she wasn't going to resign. Now, there must be a sacrificial lamb for the altar. Let's be very clear here. The United States, especially when it comes down to our agencies, be it the Secret Service, the CIA, anything else with a three-letter name, always has played, well, some nefarious games. I mean, let's be clear here. Washington, D.C. is a cesspool. And calling it a cesspool isn't fair enough because that's insulting cesspools. But D.C. is where the villainy hangs out. We're the worst of the worst, not the best hangout. I mean, after all, to be in Washington, D.C. and still have some integrity, you must be a strong titan. But for the most part, anybody that plays in that, well, open sewer is going to be a disgusting, rather incompetent person doing things on purpose for their own self-pleasure and for their own profit. But the thing is, there must always be a sacrifice. There must always be somebody who must be put on the chopping block. And rightfully so, it should be the Secret Service director. But a bigger thing needs to be called in, and that is overall, what does Biden's administration's role in all of this say? What does it say about how they've been running the Secret Service? Because after all, the president of the United States is the commander in chief. And after all, it's the Secret Service's job to, you know, one, follow orders and protect said president, and also presidential candidates. It's almost as if it's all by design. Now, to be clear here, again, accidents do happen. But knowing that we've had high-profile individuals, be they politicians or activists or community organizers or people of prominence who spoke out for change, automatically seem to disappear or go away, one has to wonder if there's a game being played here. We are still looking into the advanced process and the decisions right, that were right. made. Okay, okay. Let's, wasn't that building within the perimeter that should be secured? Do we agree with that? The building was outside of the perimeter. That's a terrible answer because as someone who has done site security, even if a building is outside of the perimeter, every threat, every building, every situation, terrain – must be investigated thoroughly and must be held into account should anything go wrong. Because after all, doing site security, your goal is to make sure said event, building, or high-profile person will be A-OK -okay as long as your presence is still there as well as the rest of your operational team. That's what you're supposed to do. Now, I shouldn't be breaking this down, but yet something so basic and simple I'm able to explain to all of you. You have to do site security. Everything must be held into account. The fact that even the building was outside of the perimeter is irrelevant. You have to take everything into account. You have to know the terrain, know the buildings, know every avenue of approach and exit. That's what you're supposed to do. The fact that she can't give a very simple answer to this very simple question says a lot about why she should not be in that position of leadership. On the day of the visit. But again, that is one of the things that during the investigation, we want to take a look at and determine whether or not other decisions should have been made. One of the things that you said, I believe in an interview, that there wasn't an agent on the roof because it was a sloped roof. Is that, is that normal? And do you fear that that immediately creates an opportunity for future would-be assassins to look for a slanted roof. I mean, it, it, this is a huge question that every American has. Why wasn't. Now, I just want to bring up something here. When I served in the Marine Corps, we did a lot of training, especially in urban terrain areas or either that villages. And guess what? Some of the uh, practice buildings that we were on that we use in, this, in these mock environments had sloped roofs, flat roofs. There were tall buildings and short buildings, big buildings and small buildings. Doors, windows, all of that. Broken buildings, houses still put together, roads, bridges, everything. Everything. 
And during these trainings, we did foot patrols or either that did site security or protect a high profile person for our training operations. And you want to know what we did? We took everything into account, even stuff that was outside of our operation perimeter. It's what we did. And every branch of service does these kind of training operations. And this should be very basic for even the Secret Service. And she isn't even taking that into account. A Secret Service agent on the roof. And there have been reports that agents were supposed to be on the roof, but it was hot that day and they didn't want to be on the roof. Can you answer any of those questions, Director? So I appreciate you asking me that question, Chairman. Uh, I should have been more clear in my answer when I spoke about where we place personnel in that interview. Uh, what I can tell you is that uh, there was a plan in place to provide overwatch, and we are still looking into responsibilities and who was going to provide overwatch. Uh, but the Secret Service in general, not speaking specifically to this incident, when we are providing overwatch, whether that be through counter snipers or other technology, prefer to have sterile rooftops. Did the Secret Service use any drones for surveillance that day? So again, I'm not going to get into specifics of that day in itself, but there are times uh, during a security plan that the Secret Service does deploy an asset like a drone. There were reports that the shooter used a drone just a few hours before the rally start time. Is that accurate? I have heard those same reports and again, am waiting for the final report. Do you know, if you can't answer the question, that's your answer. But can you answer this? Do you know? Do you know? I'm not asking yes or no, but do you know if the shooter used a drone before the shooting? That information has been passed to us from the FBI. How many Secret Service agents were assigned to President Trump on the day of the rally? Again, I'm not going to get into the specifics of the numbers of personnel that we had there, but we feel that there was a sufficient number of agents assigned. There are reports that several agents assigned to the rally on July 13th were, were temporary agents, agents not normally assigned to President Trump. Is that accurate? What I can tell you is that the agents that were assigned to former President Trump are Secret Service agents that provide close protection to him, and that was what was actual on that day. How many temporary agents were there that day? Quite frequently, sir, during campaign events, uh, the Secret Service utilizes uh, agents from HSI or the Department of Homeland Security. You, you don't know how many supplement you can't answer. our plan. Now, the thing is, if you are the chief operating officer, you have to know how many people you have on hand. Again, through my training, there was always, uh, again, a number of who is protecting what location, who is going to be where, where is the where is first and second and third squad at, where is the first team at, where is the second team at, where is the third team at. Open communication, you should have a roster. I mean, the fact that you can't even come up with a number, I mean, you are the director, the buck stops with you. You can't pretend to be ignorant and say, I didn't know, I don't know, unless maybe that's what you're trying to do to cover your tracks. After all, many people are very suspicious of how that whole entire event played out. But no answers. She is failing to deliver answers before an entire congressional hearing. Not the first time people fail to deliver answers to Congress. This is just how things operate in D.C. Had the investigators reconstructed the shooter's precise movements over the past days, weeks, and months? So... Again, we, we need we need to have and Travers Wolf says this. Can she even answer the question? What is your name? Travis, come on, Travers. Come on, buddy. She can't even barely answer that confidence that if the FBI is leading this investigation. That they're leading a credible investigation because there's some of us sitting up here today that don't have a lot of confidence in the FBI. So. I will repeat the question. Have the investigators reconstructed the shooter's precise moments over the past days, weeks, and months? I understand your question, Chairman, and I share your concerns about wanting to make sure that we have factual information. The FBI is conducting a criminal investigation. The Secret Service is conducting an internal investigation. There are a number of OIG investigations, and there is the external investigation. Okay. The la president la last initiated. question for me. Before July 13th, had the Trump detail requested additional resources? What I can tell you is that for the event.
Now, the thing is, if uh, said individual asks for additional resources, that also has to be held into account. Let's see how she answers here. And on July 13th, the details that were request the the assets that were requested for that day were given. And they were subpar assets. They were temporary agents. They were agents that failed to do proper site security. They were agents that failed to take into account the safety of the people attending, as well as the profile target being Donald Trump. This woman was full of crap. She didn't even answer anything. Here's the thing. This is just how D.C. operates. Now, we're going to have democracy in the chat. Do you think she's going to be held accountable after she has resigned? Type one for yes, Kit. Just because she resigned doesn't mean she's going to walk off into the sunset. Type two, nope, she resigned. She was told that she failed to follow orders, but nothing more will happen. I wonder how many twos will get in the chat because we've seen this before. Somebody fails, they resign, and nothing happens to them. Okay. My time has expired. Chair, no recognize this ranking member asking for just and this is the entire reason why we need to look at Congress, our institutions, these people who are supposed to do their jobs. See, what happened in Butler, Pennsylvania, was an absolute failure. And now Congress has every right to grill her because, let's face it, uh, perception drives reality. When the Praetorian Guard, I mean, I'm sorry, the Secret Service, fails to do its job, one has to wonder if this is just how they do things all the time, if this is just how they operate, whether they are all extremely lazy. After all, we have seen, we have seen firsthand, many of the quote-unquote agents, there's been plenty of memes out there. And look, while that event that took place in Butler, Pennsylvania was absolutely frightening, what was made abundantly clear is how much of a joke the Secret Service was on that day. If there were, let's say, a much more competent shooter, a better type of weapon, we would not be talking like this right now. Things would go south very quick, and we would be in very uncertain times. But yet she gets to waddle off into the sunset, resigning, of course. Will there be any more accountability? Probably not. It's D.C. after all. You don't get to a position of power just by doing a good job. You get in there by playing a filthy game. And I'm willing to bet that she knows a fair share of, well, let's say shady bits of information on, well, maybe certain rep representatives or U.S. senators and nothing more will come of it. Somebody had to be put on the sacrificial altar. And so this time around, it is the Secret Service director. And as I pulled up breaking news at least 20 minutes ago, she has resigned from her job. But we're not out of the woods yet, because if something like this can happen. Once. It could sure as hell happen again. This is not how you should be running things. If this is the canary in the coal mine, my goodness, we are standing upon piles and piles, heaps and mounds of dead canaries, because this represents, again, a failure of what's in D.C. Incompetence, nepotism, and people who are willing to advance their careers all the while a nation is burning and sinking all around them.